Donna Bernstein Select Board meeting for Wednesday, March 22nd, 2023. We'll call the meeting to order at 6.03 p.m. Just a reminder that this meeting is being broadcast live on BNC TV and live streamed on YouTube. To find BNC TV on YouTube, search for the Bernstein Northfield Community Television. This meeting will be available for later viewing by following the link at the town of Bernston.org. We'll start tonight with the warrants. We'll entertain a motion for the payroll warrant in the amount of $54,919.58. So moved. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We'll entertain a motion for the vendor warrant in the amount of $664,766.95. So moved. Second. Now, just to note that the larger than usual amount was due to the Pioneer Valley Regional School District assessment of $615,834 and the assessment for the Mosquito Control District in the amount of $12,000. Any other discussion on that? Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman. The summary budget comparison was still showing $160 in a hole for the BNC TV contract. Did we find out why? Pardon me, Stan, I didn't hear you. Huh? I didn't hear you. The B and C TV contract is in the negative $160. Uh, that account was overspent. Okay, what are we doing to correct it? <coughs> I will have to submit a reserve fund transfer to the Finance Committee. Okay. And also, <coughs> we, are, we do have a uh, negative on uh, highway uh, snow and ice removal salaries of $156, but we knew we were going to probably have that and that'll be cleared up at, by the end of the uh, fiscal year. Yep. And emergency communication is still showing a negative $54. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Any other discussion on that line? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We'll entertain a motion for the regular meeting minutes of March 8th, 2023. So moved. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Entertain a motion for the special meeting and executive session of March 15th, 2023. So moved. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Calendar and announcements. There'll be a joint finance committee select board meeting on Monday, March 27th, 2023 at 6.30 p.m. at the town hall. There'll be a conservation commission meeting on Tuesday, March 28th, 2023 at 6 p.m. at the town hall. Citizens concerned, seeing none in the room that aren't already on the agenda, we'll move into our appointments and we'll invite up Mr. John Lapore and Dave Pomerantz on an MVP update. Please come on up so we can and we can catch your voices a little better for the oh, recording. Okay. Yeah, I'll tell you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome Good. tonight. Good. Thank you. Right. We did all receive your correspondence, John, oh, okay. about right. us. We did get an opportunity to read the basic email. Oh, okay, great, yeah. So we do know that much, yep. Give you a sketch of what's going on. Um, David and I are here tonight. <coughs> Everyone knows David, so yep. light night here, so. Um, just want to give you a couple, just give you an overview of what, when, when, what we wanted to talk about. We wanted to give you an update on what we've done so far, talk about the application process, and then also ultimately the grant management if we get the grant, so. Uh, we submitted an um, expression of interest and received great feedback from um, the uh, MVP folks, our local guy, which is um, Smith. Andrew Smith. Andrew Smith. And I was going to call him Richard. <laughs> it doesn't really matter, but yeah, Andrew Smith. And he was very helpful in helping us to, you know, to kind of sort through some things. We have since decided that uh, trying to do the wildfire, on the wildfire and the flooding would make it is really two different projects and it turns out anything to do with flooding uh, the second year would all be permitting for any kind of work that was going to be done you know in the in the river fronts so it didn't make sense to try to do it just felt like it was too much okay. um, in which case um, you know we could apply begin the application process next year once we do the wildfire so we're going to focus on wildfires this year we'd like to in the application um, and oh, I don't know if you know this or not, but the um, the what do they call it? The copay? What, 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 what do they call it? In kind. The in kind contribution. In kind contribution for Bernstein is ten percent, not twenty five percent, which is significant. Yeah, it is. Both Bernstein and Leiden, mm -hmm. you know, we both lucked out that way. So that's a significant um, uh, difference in what we have. 
So the application process involved, um, we've been doing our research with kind of stockpiling information and getting ready to, to, do the, to do that work. Dave has actually been through the application. He um, has dug into it more, and perhaps you could talk about that a sure. little bit. Sure. So basically, we expect the state to release the fiscal 24 package, could be this week or next week, uh, with a filing date of probably late May. Um, then notification on the award. John and I are optimistic we're going to get an award uh, by August with a start date of September for the project. Um, so the application process is basically uh, approximately 25 pages of data and information that they're looking for. Uh, lots of you know, boilerplate templates that we need to fill out to justify the project. And as they said in a we webinar recently, you have to pretend that the project reviewers know nothing about Leiden and Berniston, even though they might have read the MVP plans for both mm -hmm. towns. Uh, but they're, they're basically in Boston and they're not out here. They don't know as much detail about the towns as we need to present to them. So it's a fairly streamlined process. Um, John and I are going to get right to work on you know, populating that application as soon as the package is released from <coughs> Boston. And, um, I, if you look at the history of other action grants that have been made across the state since 2017, very few multi-town proposals, and MVP is more and more looking at regional collaboration pro projects, uh, and very little dealing with wildfires, especially out in this part of the state. So we're really feeling optimistic about uh, submitting a great package and, and getting the award. Great. That's a good thing. The big thing about the project that we're working on is that it doesn't, ha it doesn't have, like David said, it doesn't have a lot of precedents already set. We're developing a protocol for doing this project that, it, that could be replicated by you know, any, any small town. So it's, that is, also makes it really appealing for, uh, for its, its funding. Um, we, went, we both did the, did, the, did the webinar, which introduced the projects and talked about the, the nine principles that they follow and when they're evaluating them in the evaluation process. And I'm trying to remember the, the amount of the, the average amount of grants that they gave last year. I think it was between two hundred and fifty and three hundred and fifty thousand right. dollars. The average. So the money is significant, mm -hmm. you know, for, for doing the work. Um, so that's pretty much it. The application, did you say the application's due in May, probably? End of May. End of May, okay, yep, yeah. yeah. okay. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, did you have any questions on that piece? So once you get awarded the grant, because I'm pretty optimistic you'll get it too. Sure. Um, sure. There'll be some community outreach that then we can help out with doing some of the research <coughs> or yep. as part of the in-kind services, is yep. that the way it would go? Yep, yep, I'm, I imagine we'll be having, we'll be having a number of meetings. Yep. I definitely have to have stakeholder meetings. Basically, the project will identify, you know, areas which are, which is supposed to be private property that are uh, most vulnerable. Um, once that's done, there's going to be a need to reach out to the to the landowners, get engaged with them, and find out what they're responding, you know, if they're positive, they're going to respond positively towards, you know, what the ideas are behind this. Um, the plan from there is to move forward with a couple of things we're still working out, particularly, you know, uh, a landowner might not be as, it would be more inclined to want to engage in the fire management aspect of it if there was some outside funding such as through NRCS to help cover the cost of any kind of mitigation that was necessary. But identifying the areas as being prone is, is obviously the big piece. The second piece is really, is really beginning to mitigate around that if we see any extreme conditions, so. Okay. Just to, Brian, you had a question? No. Oh, so just, just to add a third, what I call the third leg of the stool to this, besides the assessment piece, the community outreach and the citizen scientist, and then instituting the, the forest management practices, the other leg of the stool is the emergency management piece. And both towns' MVP plans talk about inadequate water supplies, access routes, staging areas. Um, so I'm really looking forward to working with both Lyden on the co-EMD up there um, and with, with Pete Shedd and his crew here to really start thinking about 
you know, additional resources that the town might want to think about, you know, brush truck uh, agreements with landowners for accessing for additional fire ponds, which is what the MVP plan talks extensively about, not enough water resources. Um, so that whole emergency management piece is going to be really critical. Yeah. Any questions? Chris, okay. sure. So who's going to manage the grant and do the reporting to the state? So um, it makes most sense because the uh, request for proposed RFPs need to be um, spec'd out for particular property and landowners and, and also the, it involves uh, you know the stakeholder meetings which I think is pretty heavily reliant on a level of trust from local people you know it probably makes most sense for David and I to be energy grant yeah, and we have offered up the grant writers to to help them if they felt they oh, needed okay. the assistance of that for any piece of that okay. great for either writing the grant and or managing okay. it at the end to help yeah, gather the pieces of paper really yeah. Really yeah. Really if they needed it yeah yeah, Good question, quarter, though. There's yeah. quarterly reports we have to submit. There's a, an annual or a yearly progress report that the state is want to see. Um, so this would, there's clearly areas uh, putting together with advertising for the stakeholder meetings where, where we might want to rely, work with capital. Yep. Um, just because, you know, it's, it's a multi town project. Right. Yeah. So. And don't be afraid to do that, really. I mean, it's a mm -hmm. good resource we have. No. It's okay. worked out well on several things we've done so far with them. Okay. Does that, does, does, are there any pieces in that that we need to consider in the grant application in terms of budget? Well, we give charge an hourly rate as they manage projects okay. and or help with the paperwork. So okay. it might not be a bad idea to put a little piece in there okay. that would help offset some of the town's cost for that. If yeah. that's the ability right. within the grant is allowed for that, yeah. which I'm, they might, I'm, most of them do, I assume, right? Sure, yeah, yeah. Some sort of administrative piece right. in there. Yeah. Oh. Or that makes sense that, to you. Or could that be part of the in kind from, from, from <coughs> Yeah. Which, whichever way you felt it was better. I mean, because <coughs> okay. that's that's a good point, the in kind piece of it. Right. A tr I, yeah. A true outlay. Yeah. That would count yeah, I, I would that. think once we really start putting pencil to paper to figure out where the dollars and cents are going to come from, that that might be the best approach is uh, our rate with capitals on her is $60 an hour. Okay. Uh, I, I don't know what. The extent of their participation might be, but to have that number, you know, you might be able to forecast better than any of us could. Sure. Right. Yeah. yeah. Good point. Do you know if they review grants? So if we have, I mean, we don't. It might be a good idea review to have them, a the grant, application, the application itself reviewed by them, since they are mm -hmm. obviously grant writers. That would be useful. I would yeah, think I, they would. <laughs> that might be a good investment of, of time and energy, right. and it would give us a way to reflect and get stuff done. Yeah, actually, that's a great idea, John. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Lou, you can reach out to them and ask them that question in particular and get yeah. back to John with that. I, I yeah. would be shocked yeah. if they don't or wouldn't. Yeah. But. yeah. And perhaps, Lou, if you in the conversation, just a thought's coming out of my head, so I'm going to say it. Um, maybe get an idea of what they, and it was how many pages would you say of the application? It's about 25 plus pages. Right. So, what the time turn, you know, what they need, what they're thinking of a turnaround in terms of time, and, mm -hmm. and you know, what that would look like for them. Okay. That and they, and, and we may want to do a Zoom meeting with them and just go over the grant and then let them do a review. Yeah, I think that's really a good idea too, Dave, because uh, that way, rather than speculate on different aspects of this, uh, to get everybody together, whether it's in person or on Zoom or whatever, uh, to really get that going. Uh, so we're it's more of a team effort mm -hmm. rather than uh, right. you know this component that component yeah. right 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 okay. right yeah so that sounds that sounds like it'd be helpful we got to get the grant first <laughs> I mean ideally it sounds positive it does it'd be great if we did, if it didn't cost the town anything and I know we're very conscious of that and I think we can do a lot of this with <clears> just in kind service between you know all the involvement that we have so I'm pretty optimistic yeah. about it. maybe too optimistic but it's always hey. Helps. <laughs> Got to be right. That's right. We appreciate all the hard work you guys are doing on this, though. Yeah. I mean, you guys have done a lot already. <coughs> yeah, yeah. To get to this point. Well, it's, it's an interesting topic. It's a critical issue, mm -hmm. and um, both towns are really interested yeah. to do this. So I think it's going to be a, a great project. 
Great. Um, the second half of the, okay, so this is a two year project. Okay. Okay, just so you're clear on that. And then the other piece is the river corridor mapping has been put on hold. I'm going to pick up work with um, my other uh, consultants working with FERCOG and continue because I needed I needed to get some field support on that. So and the fellow that's doing his name is Nick. Uh, it's out of field geology services. They're out of Maine. Um, they've been really helpful, but it's been a long time since I've really seen them or done any of this work. So we're going to pick up, pick that up again in May. And I'll work on that and have that finished up because we, the town needs to, the planning board needs to work on those bylaws, okay. river corridor bylaws to protect people and things. So. Great. So that's still in the works. Perfect. So, beautiful. Thank you. Oh, good, Thank gentlemen. You. I appreciate the update. Anything else? Great. Oh, you're a nice senior chief. <laughs> yeah, I'm the guy, right? Yeah, my, my, uh, my son in law is a lieutenant. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Very so. proud of him. He's doing yeah. great. He's a Mustang. I don't know if you know what a Mustang is. Well, a Mustang nope. used to be a plane. <laughs> no, a Mustang is a person who starts out as a regular sailor and becomes an officer. Oh. So a lot of, you know, most people go through the, you know, the Naval yeah. Academy and, yeah. and then they and then they move into being an officer right off. But he started from the bottom and worked his way up. He's a real worker. Wow, I'm very great. proud of him. So. All right. All right. Thanks a lot. Yep. Thank yep. you. Good, Good to see you. Thank yeah, you for your time. See you guys, you guys as well. Thank you. We'll keep, we'll keep you updated. Either yes, please. Or Appreciate it. Thanks, John. Thanks, Dave. Okay, next up on our agenda, new business, the annual appointments. So I'm gonna read through the list, if everybody's good with it, and we'll do one motion at the end of it all to accept it, if you guys are good with that. Good with that. BNC TV board representatives. These are for one year terms, Robert Raymond and Kenneth Whisk. E911 coordinator, a one year term, Peter Shedd. All the following are election poll workers, all for one year. Luella Atherton, Judith Beckwith, Patricia Ann Grover, Norman LaCoy, Susan LaCoy, Donald LaCoy, Luis, I'm going to wreck Lagoo. this one. Thank you, Lagu. <laughs> Anne Marie Malone, Carly, go ahead, what's that? Anne Marie Mallon. Anne Marie Mallon, Carly Nardowitz, Donna Newton, Jeanette Page, Beth Watrous, Shannon Wisman Hoare, and Katrina Domkeller. Those are all one year terms. And for election wardens for one year terms, Paul Abbey, Robert Lively, Jeanette Page. Emergency Management Committee member, one year, Lloyd Grover. Emergency Management Committee member for one year, Bill Montiglio. And another Emergency Management Committee member for one year, Roxanne Shedd. One more emergency management committee member for one year, Peter Shedd. Franklin, we have two Franklin County solid waste representatives positions that are open. FERCOG council representative for one year, Stanley Garland. We have an open position for an alternate for the FERCOG council representative for a one year term on the <coughs> FERCOG FCCIP representative, Robert Raymond. We have one opening for the FERCOG one-year position appointment for the FRPB representative. We have a one-year position for the FERCOG FRPB representative, which is Stanley Garland. The FERCOG REPC representative for one year is Peter Shedd. Hazardous materials consultant for one year, Peter Shedd. LEPC local emergency planning committee Peter Shedd for one year, Police Chief James Palmieri for one year, the following are police officers all for one year terms, Curtis Weaver, Thomas Shabbat, Darren Gale, Michael Kelly, Jordan Zukowski, Mitchell Waldron. We have a one year term for a police department sergeant, John Richardson, sexual harassment officer for one year, Marvin Shedd. Veterans Agent Representative for one year, Marvin Shedd. Website Content Committee for one year terms, Louis Bordeaux, Stanley Garland, and we have two open positions on the Website Content Committee. And the following are three year terms, Conservation Commission Member, Damian Moody, Green Committee Member, Clayton Cardin, Historical Commission Member, 
for three-year terms. Kelt Grant, Historical Commission member, Christine Pinillo, Local Cultural Council members, the following are all for three-year terms. Marge Anderson, Sheila Domkeller, Annette Mackin, and Cynthia Fulton. Planning Board member for three-year term, Pamela Nuovo. Planning Board member alternate for a three-year term, John Lepore. Registrar, Christina Wisk. Christina Slocum Wisk, I better say it right, right? Yeah. <laughs> Veterans Memorial Committee members, we have two for three-year terms, Stanley Garland, Marvin Shedd. Zoning Board of Appeals alternate member for a three-year term, Mark Fitzpatrick. Zoning Board of Appeals member for a three-year term, Jack Patch. We have a Zoning Board of Appeals member alternate position also open. I thought we had three uh, people for a Veterans Memorial Committee. For what? For the Veterans Memorial Committee. The terms might be different years. Okay, okay. Because those are all three year ones. I bet okay. they are yeah. staggered a little bit. Exactly. Yeah, because Dan, Daniel, yeah, he's, he's uh, in there. He's should. He's okay. okay. He just expires a different year. And that's all of them. If somebody would like to make a single motion to accept them all as read, so we'll move. Second. Any other discussion on the appointments as we just read them? All those in favor? Aye. 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 You, do you need something signed, Chris, for that, or that's. The motion's good Maybe in his in minutes. minutes. Fine. Green committee appointment. I don't have an official letter for that though, right? No, just what's written there, sir. Okay, the green committee. The chair, Chris Wisk, has asked the select board to appoint Frank Ribeiro to the green committee. There's an opening on the green committee. There was a resignation. Frank Ribeiro has volunteered to join the green committee and Chris has put that name forward. Somebody like to make a motion? So moved. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Next up we have a Council on Aging van driver appointment. We have a letter here from Jennifer Reynolds from the Council on Aging. Dear Shannon, the Bernston Council on Aging is pleased to offer you the position of the part-time van driver position at the Bernston Senior Center um, with the offer of employment at an hourly rate of $17 an hour, effective Thursday, March 23rd. This appointment is contingent on affirmative vote of appointment by the Board of Selectmen at their next regular meeting, which is Wednesday, March 22nd, 2023. Somebody like a motion? So moved. <coughs> Second. Any other discussion on that van driver appointment? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Next up, we have a letter from Chris Slocum Wisk. It's a resignation letter as town clerk. Don't get too nervous. It's over a year away, but I'm going to read it. <laughs> Dear Select Board, this is dated March 13th, 2023. Dear Select Board, after much consideration, I have made a decision to resign as the town clerk effective June 30th, 2024. I have enjoyed serving the residents of our wonderful community. New residents tell me that Bernston is a paradise. Perhaps that is why I have lived here pretty much my whole life. Bernston is truly special and I will continue to volunteer as a citizen and not a public official. I'm giving you ample notice to find the perfect candidate to take my place. The sooner the better as many of the duties of the town clerk are managed annually. It would be ideal if the new person could start by October if not sooner. I start preparing the annual town census by the beginning of December and the mailing is done by our vendors the beginning of January. Also in December is preparing the town clerk budget for the next fiscal year. Dog licensing begins in January when the census is sent to the residents. The presidential primary will be in March and that process will start in January as well with receiving vote by mail applications. Also in March is the annual town caucus and appointments to the various boards and committees. The annual town election is on the first Monday in May. An annual town meeting is held when the select board sets the date. The annual street list is completed by April 15th. In June, town clerks clean up their inactive voters by running an inactivation process on the state VRIS computer. Voters that are inactivated will receive a postcard asking them to verify if they still live in town. 
When they return the card, they are either deleted if they moved or reactivated if they have not. I would like to help the select board to find a person who has the qualities and technical skills for the job. Also, you may need to consider the additional wages necessary to hire and train a qualified candidate now prior to our annual town meeting. Additional hours added to the budget may be necessary. Training a person takes away from the productive time. I will provide you with a job description for the town clerk position and encompasses most of the skills and duties necessary for the candidate to possess. I look forward to helping with this transition. Respectfully submitted, Christina Slocum Wisk, Town Clerk. That's good and bad that we receive it. Thanks for the big notice, the long notice. That's very helpful. Mm -hmm. And we all hope to someday to get out of this service and enjoy life a little it's bit just more. It's gotten so ridiculous with the election laws and all these little these laws. And just seconding what you said, there was an article in the paper this week, and I think it was the town of Montague who's yeah, losing their town clerk mm -hmm. for very similar reasons that the regulations are just getting crazy from the state of Massachusetts. So we appreciate the early notice on the letter. Yeah, just, thank you. You're welcome. Do we have to officially yeah. accept this for a year away? I move to yes. accept the resignation of Christine Slocum Wisk. Would would much regret and wish her. A lot of luck and happiness. Thank you. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks for the notice, Chris. Appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. So next up we have, uh, we've, we've kind of talked around the annual town meeting dates, yeah. which was mentioned in Chris's letter. So do we want to try to nail something down here? And along with that, we need to agree on a time to end petitioned articles for that warrant. I know we've thrown a couple dates around. You threw a couple dates around. Well, it's, I'm more concerned about when our budget process is going to be done mm -hmm. because if you know, that's going to be complete before we can get the wards. The wards have to be out there for what, 14 days, seven days? Annual is two weeks, right? Two weeks. I think oh. Annual town meeting warrant. I think <coughs> annual seven days special is two weeks for some reason. I could be wrong. Right. Yes. As opposed to warrant. Yeah. Seven You're days. You're going to need it way before then to put it all articles. Right. So do we want to wait another week or two to decide? Well, another two weeks. We're in April. Right. And and uh, right then we know that if we're going to have it that first week of May, we're pretty much to the point right now where we might have to wait till June. Yep. And this is why I wanted the board to discuss this tonight because I know some of the speculative dates were in early May, which our backs would really be up against the wall. Yeah, I think early May is going to be a crunch, personally, yeah. right now. Because yeah, no, that's why we need to get this budget process done quicker. <clears throat> so you want to bring it back up at our next meeting? Well, we should have yeah, a pretty good handle on this budget. We, we best see where we are with the, with with the two budget. Two more weeks. And now, Lou can start putting together the warrant. Mm -hmm. Making sure, no, because you could, it's a boilerplate, anyways, right? Yeah, all I do from year to year is I take the previous years, save it under a new file name, and typically it's the first 10 or 11 articles <coughs> are pretty much the same. The boilerplate. Make sure the dates change. So anything beyond that are, are the articles that usually finance gets involved with as far as uh, specifics, and then if there's anything like zoning changes or whatnot. Chris, do you think there'll be any zoning stuff on this? Town meeting? No. And the other thing, no, we, thank you. <laughs> yeah. And we gotta, we gotta start thinking about if we want to put anything on that warrant for changes, for instance, on fines, or if we want to increase fines or any of that stuff. That, I don't know if that has to go on a town warrant. We'd have to. I, I, maybe it doesn't. Some things the select board can set. So you'll have to yeah. look and see what it is you're looking at and see what the state law says. You know, throughout the year, we always are thinking about something. Uh, that we need to put on the town warrant and by the time we get to the town warrant we've forgotten it so there should be a file in there that you just drop a piece of paper and you know, with a one-liner so it, when it comes to this time of year we can pull that out and say okay we we're discussing this and, I know my memory is not that great so remember everything so, so you can start laying out the basic format of the warrant with the boilerplate stuff and once we have the numbers to plug in from finance and us, we can plug those in. Yeah, right now we have a date held uh, 
Because yeah, you contacted, did you? Uh, Kringa Farm Table. Yeah. But well, that was an early May date though, right? We were talking originally? Yes. Yeah, I talked to Tim Stinson, who has been great to us the last couple of years over there. And his, uh, his response was, anything you guys need. So I've got a good feeling about that. I'll follow up with him tomorrow to say that it might not necessarily be early May. Because okay, we'd have to do it either on the 3rd or the 10th. The town election's on May 1st. So that's, uh, we don't really have a heck of, because if we- uh, Not a lot of time between now and then. No, because uh, the 27th is uh, the last week of March is next week when we, and, and uh, Jane had another person coming in to look at the, you know, the review the, with the budget the following week, April 3rd. It's too late, it's gotta, we gotta get this done. Yeah, she was trying to move them up to this coming Monday. Yeah. I don't know if she's successful or not. So, yeah, she's gonna try that, yeah. So I think we still don't have enough information. Does everybody agree with no. that? Yes. No, we so definitely can't day. do it that first week of May now because we're already we're already in a soup because we want to be able to review it with it, you know, like we always have before on the, on the TV for the townspeople to listen in and, and hear about the the, the uh, warrants. But right now we we wouldn't have time to even do that. No. So we'll have to wait. We'll keep that an agenda item for the next time. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay, we're going to move on toward old business. We all received several correspondence about the new sign, potential new sign at the Bernstein Elementary School. What are folks' thoughts, feelings? Are we I ready to make a decision on that? Did not like any of the signs that were presented on the, in the email. I thought they were all kind of tacky looking. Uh, but what we would want over to the... Uh, uh, elementary school and I'm sure it's not what I'm sure they would do a better job I'm just saying those aren't the designs I would look at I'd look at we see the sign that we have there now when that was originally put up there that was a good-looking sign and it was and, and, and it's something that you could pops and you and you notice it uh, so just keep it within the $1,500 to $2,000 range I think we sh should be able to find or get some design that would look better. Uh, the Burnison L uh, Senior Center signs over here <coughs> look pretty good. Uh, so that's what, that's my only thought. I think you know, we need to go forward with it. I like the verbiage. I like the uh, way it was written up on it. Burnison Elementary School serving the towns of uh, Burnison and Leiden. Uh, I think that's uh, appropriate. Does anybody have a feel one way or another whether they would like to go the hand painted sign route or the hail sign route? And then they still would work on the artwork, I guess I would say, on a hand painted one until everybody was happy with what they were trying to. My concern with the hand painted is its durability. Right. Um, I went and looked at both of them. I sent you pictures of yep. them. Um, they're, they're beautiful signs, they're nice artwork, but. Uh, the longevity of them, the survivability of the, in winter conditions in, in New England, it's tough. Um, the hail signs, they're a little bit more durable, that's all. Yeah, they're as forever as you can get. Yes. When I say forever. <laughs> what, when are you, they, what are they made out of? It's like, it's like recycled material. It's more like the senior center signs. Yes. Yeah, that's that's what that we would material. It's for. like a recycled plastic. But okay. there's a fancy name for it, but I'm losing it right now. I don't know. Yeah, it could be that. Like that. I mean, and the current sign we have now is a wooden hand-painted sign, and that's why we're in this particular. Yeah, we'll be revisiting this in a couple of years. Right. And it's been there for years. And I did note that in Hale's quote, it did include the new posts, the installation, mm -hmm. the other price, which was closer to the 2000 was just for the sign. We were going to have to okay, to put say it in. The Hale has different designs that we could choose from and stuff? And yeah. Yeah. So maybe we can steer Gretchen in that direction. Sounds like a plan. Do you guys both agree with that toward a, yeah. a hail type sign that would be more durable than a hand painted? Okay. And I can shoot her an email, Lou, or you can, whichever. Good. We'll 
Well, just don't do anything until we all agree on what the final thing looks like, which is what she suggested already, so. Okay. I think if everybody's okay with it, we have on our agenda next the intermunicipal agreement with Leiden. I think we all agree on the vote we took last week. Yes. Um, for that to move forward without that lease section in it. Is that true? So we can skip that item if everybody's good with that. Yep. Okay, we'll move on to other business. We have a B, Burniston Elementary School usage request. It's from the Burniston PTO. They have requested um, for their March 25th craft fair to use the kitchen prep area to serve food during the craft fair. Um, the principal, Cindy Schultz, has signed off on that request at the elementary school for the PTO to use that on that date which is all we yep. typically require. Does somebody want to make a motion to? As long as the principal has signed and off. she has signed Make a it. motion that we uh, allow the uh, usage of the school. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Yeah. Aye. Thank you, sir. Okay. Turn the page here. Okay, we received a letter from the Council on Aging to the Burnison Select Board from Nancy Bordowick. It's in regards to the demand transportation contract. Um, Dear Burnison Select Board, this memo is in regards to the proposed demand transport contract changes that were received from Tina Cody Administrator FRTA on March 16th. The proposed transportation changes to the Burnison Northfield Senior Van services were discussed in length by myself, Jennifer Reynolds, Colleen Letourneau, and various users of the van service. The Berniston Council on Aging had their monthly meeting on 321 2023 and the proposal was on the agenda. The Berniston COA board discussed it in great detail, the current operating status, and talked in great detail about the current operating status, terms in the new proposal, and consumer feedback on FRTA service. The COA's mission is to offer services to the seniors in our communities enabling them to age in their homes with dignity. After much discussion, the Burniston COA board made a motion and voted unanimously to recommend to the Burniston Select Board to keep the status quo and continue to operate the van service as currently operating and therefore reject the FRTA proposed changes outlined in the March 16th email from Tina Cody. The COA board believes that keeping the van service as is best serves the seniors of both Burniston and Northfield. An offer has been executed and accepted for a new primary van driver and we hope to get her trained, her training completed in early April. The COA board is pleased to continue to offer excellence, compassionate transportation options to Burniston and Northfield seniors. Myself and Jennifer would be happy to discuss the, the Burniston COA board's recommendation with either select boards at their convenience. Sincere, sincerely, Nancy Bordewick, Chair, Burniston Council on Aging. Ken. Okay, I'd like to make a motion that the Select Board uh, agree with the uh, Council on Aging Board uh, to leave the uh, transportation solution as is uh, without any changes. Uh, it's been serving the, the seniors very effectively and the proposal uh, from the FRTA would uh, dramatically change it and limit the uh, service to our seniors. So with that, I would make that recommendation and that motion. I'll second it for discussion. Okay. Uh, a little concerned here after reading uh, both uh, our Council of Agents comments and uh, the ones from Tina Cody. In her proposal there's some stuff in her proposal that uh, I don't think we should just ignore I think there is some uh, uh, no they already have all the drivers they already have everybody's query checked they already have the hours established uh, that they'll be open they already have the staff that is available to take the phone calls they're saying here that uh, once they get established, they would then gradually open transportation services up to the general public of both towns. Uh, that, that's huge one right there, that uh, something that 
I think we should be considering because we don't have transportation or any type of services in this community for uh, transportation for people. Uh, and I'm kind of torn here because I've uh, always gone along with the uh, our board over there and <coughs> don't really want to go against them, but I would almost like to see uh, see us sit down at a table and, and with both parties and, and discuss this further unless there's something I'm missing here. That's all I'm saying. It's a per perfectly appropriate to have them come in and yeah. discuss it in front of us. And yeah, because I'm not, I mean, I said they've always done a good job, but like, uh, I was all for going along with the, our committee, but reading this other one from her, is, uh, there's a lot there that we wouldn't have to be responsible. Now, who owns the van now? FRTA. Yes. FRTA, so it was their van anyways. Right. Uh, that wouldn't change, and they've always owned no. it. Yeah. And that's not a change the process. The, what they're looking to do is take the scheduling down to Greenfield. And yeah. their scheduling process is quite a bit dramatically different than the current scheduling process. We have a, someone on staff at the senior center that takes the calls from our seniors and uh, arranges for the transport of those seniors. The solution that uh, Tina is offering uh, would eliminate that process and um, create quite a disruption to our seniors as to uh, being able to schedule their uh, medical visits and the like. Uh, do they do they have to pay for the bus rides? The seniors. It, it, this is either way. It's the the same uh, cost structure. It, the, the FRTA provides the because uh, as she says here they would have the option to be able to self schedule or cancel their own trip using an electronic device or continue to call trips into our office as stated above if they choose this option they can see in real time where the bus is and the precise time they will get picked up so mm -hmm. and they're, and they're saying she's saying here that uh, their schedule or the, their calling time is from Eight to four, right. So I, 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 I'm just told, I'm just torn, Ken. I'm not trying to go against. No, no I, I just, absolutely just understand. That, it's I mean, appropriate to have them come in and let's talk about it. So you want to schedule a meeting with both the sure. COA we can and invite them into the and next Tina as well, okay. or just yep. Unless absolutely. I'm being both unless parties. I'm being foolish, and you guys think I am, we'll go the other way with it. I mean, perfectly appropriate. We'll see if we can set something up for next week, Lou, and off week to meet with the COA and. Oh, you're not here. Yeah, I'm here. I hate to be that guy that does that. How, how do you know when this contract is supposed to be signed by? If we waited one more week with that, totally. I don't think it disrupts it. No. Okay, maybe the week you come back, we can set something up for. Ask her to come to the yeah. select board meeting. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because that would be a, a That's meeting. That's a good week. idea. See if Tina and the COA can come. Good. I think in the end, that's the best thing. Yep. So we'll pass over that for the time being. Yeah. Okay, before we go to the town coordinator's report, does anybody have anything they'd like to bring up? Stan, I think you had one thing you were going to bring up, right? Oh, the uh, landfill monitoring. Uh, this is, there's going to be a change, I guess. Uh, they're considering a change to, uh, DEP is, like, does, it, does that the right acronym, DEP? Yes. They, uh, <clears throat> they're proposing instead of when our 30 years runs up, well, we'd hope that we'd be done with this testing for our landfill. And now that they're, they're trying to open this up where it could go on for another 20 years, go on for, go on forever. And at $8,000 a well, and with 13 wells, uh, that would be quite costly. So I'm suggesting that we send a memo out to or a letter out to Cumberford and, 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 Mr. and Natalie Blaze asking them what their position is on this and what they're doing to try to stop this from happening because again it's another thing that the state is throwing down to the towns that's costing us more money 
and it's really not getting anything out of it. I mean, our wells have been tested, tested, and tested, and they come back almost clean all the time. So I don't know, and this has uh, been quite a few years since it's been closed. Any other piece of that, if I can throw in there, Stan, they're also considering adding additional testing for PFAS. Yes, sir. Which is an additional $460 per well. Yep. And that's and today's if, price. Who knows what that'll be two, three, four if years. The state down. wants that information. Well, our guy can get it for him, but the state should be paying the bill for it. Most definitely. So if we could write that letter, I agree with Stan, that would be a... It's almost at a point where we'd like to see the state house just shut right down for about <laughs> three years and let things calm down and figure <laughs> out what's going on because They've got it so they've got it so things so messed up right now, and they just keep throwing things, and without any idea how much it's costing. Look at the voting thing that they've created. Yeah, the you know, voting mess, as I call it. It's oh, and there's even you know ethics commission now. I got to start holding things <laughs> back, and then the vitals division is going to come out with all new software stuff. In January, right. before the primary. Right, perfect. Deal with that. You know? They're just so trying just to justify their people's jobs in the state house, so they keep coming up with this foolishness. You're okay if we write a letter for Absolutely. you? Absolutely. Right? And we'll sign it. And I'm sorry for my rant, folks. No, nope, that's no. just a rant that's away. Do you have anything else you want to bring up that's not on here, Stan? Other business? No. No, Can I have a nope, lot, but I better, I, better, I better stop right there. <laughs> okay, we'll move to the town coordinator's report then. I don't know. Stan was just getting warmed up. <laughs> I think maybe we should start talking about property taxes or something. <laughs> really uh, fire him up. He low. just paid his bill. Uh, that's true. That's true. So I should start by saying thank you, Mr. Garland, yes. for helping out the town. All right, just a couple things tonight. Uh, as you alluded to during the vendor warrant segment, Brian, oh, yeah. Uh, the mosquito invoices have been paid, so we are uh, esteemed up. members of the Pioneer Valley Mosquito Control District. The, the thing that was really kind of crazy about that was even though the district is run out here in the valley, check goes out to Boston for it, so here we go again. Mm -hmm. So somebody's got to be on hand at the State House to receive that mail stand. It's like cash yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, sure. And then, and then you say, <laughs> well, the mail doesn't always get to us. Remember oh, that's that conversation? Right. The mail doesn't always get to us. You know, that's right. They don't always process it right away and all that good stuff. Yeah, that's so. a good point. Yeah. Uh, something else that's been kind of needing attention was the flag that was outside. Uh, it had been tattered and during one of the windstorms recently looped over the top. So no matter how much more wind came up, it wasn't going to fix itself. So. Uh, Brian Miner and I got together and uh, one of the folks who parks his truck over at the uh, town yard came by this morning and got his uh, boom up there. So it untangled. Uh, Brian and I put a new flag up this morning, so we have a new flag here at Town Hall. Perfect. Thank you. Excellent. Um, one of the things Gretchen talked to us about last week was the estimate for Jamrog to install some mini splits over at the Bernstein Elementary <coughs> School. Um, I had sent this out, Gretchen sent this to me, uh, and Stan picked up on it right away that uh, the proposal that came in, although it was for the same dollar amount that we had talked about last week, uh, it didn't include the one that we had mentioned about the cafeteria. Mm -hmm. So Gretchen followed up on that and she said that uh, she talked to Nicole over at Jamrog who got together with Jason and they're going to try and coordinate a time to get over there. So that'll be a supplementary estimate when that comes out. Um, but that one does, uh, the, the estimate for the first three is $35,895, but after the rebates, which are over $19,000, the bottom line is $16,720 on that. Now, gentlemen, I gave you, typically I don't give you a prop for the town coordinator's oh. report, but I did tonight. Um, in the course of trying to get the ramp covered over at the senior center, uh, we really haven't found the right approach to it. And a local builder came in, we were talking the other day, and he's been over there a couple or three times and said that before you really consider enclosing any portion of that, from all the salt that's been thrown on there for the winters for so long, there is a serious amount of degradation going on. So what you see before you is his proposal to fix the ramp that's over there. And I'll just get right to the last page. And 
It's for about $12,000 to fix the ramp that's over there. Um, he is of the opinion that when we get to a point that we do want to cover it to keep the weather off of it, that one of those canvas type apparatus would probably be the best bet over there. But uh, obviously this is a huge expense and something unforeseen. So rather than just tell you about it, I wanted to give it to you in black and white so that you know, you're able to give it some consideration and think if that's the direction we want to go with it. Has the um, building inspector during his inspections ever written up parts of that ramp? I mean, I do know when we're over there for the pop-up pantries, you can see the connection from the four by four to the concrete for footing. I would, I, I would, I would have to ask Jennifer if, uh, away, because he was gone. just over there not too long ago. Because I think Ken was, was over no, there. Nothing was brought up about the ramp. I mean, you can see where a lot of those brackets are. There's not much left of, if anything, on a lot right. of where the connection is to it the It would concrete. be catastrophic if it if failed. Ever fell <laughs> yeah. on it. One of the things that the inspector from the COG did in his annual inspection, there was a conversation about not just the covering of the ramp, but the, um, uh, the covering of the back door. And he discouraged further consideration of that as a solution <clears throat> because it would not meet the requirements of the historical commission okay. and we would face some serious financial penalties if we went against them so we need to I think it's a significant penalty if we have somebody slip and get hurt because you bet because we don't uh, have it covered so I think I think he's wrong there I think uh, as, as long as we can figure out a way of not attaching it to the building and, and putting something up, even if the roof has to just slope one way, so it doesn't slope both ways, it slopes one way away from the uh, mm -hmm. steps, uh, that would be uh, a help. So uh, I, I don't understand why they feel that if you have a historic building, you still can't make things safe. And that's what he's saying. Right. In my book. Absolutely agree, but the historical commission is the historical commission, mm -hmm. and they. Well, I I would think that if you we reached out to uh, whoever and and explained to them what we're trying to do because of what happens there, uh, they would probably I would I would assume they would they wouldn't have an issue with it as long as it wasn't attached, or if it, if it was attached attached in in a in a manner that it could be removed without. Uh, change in any of the facade for the, for the building. So for this piece of it, I mean, yeah. this this would have to be done, this type of work before we did that, which is the right. suggestion here, and yeah. probably and, a good one. And um, I don't know, like, you've got like bathroom in here. Right, do we want to, I don't know how often we still see Jeff Gale and how crazy busy he is. Is that something uh, well, he would ever do? Well, actually what too? ended up happening was uh, Jeff went over there and Jen was just dissatisfied with uh, any of the uh, discussion that they had. Uh, he got one of his other business partners or uh, connections involved, and she was just dissatisfied with uh, his solution over there. Uh, you know, what, what she wanted was not what they said they were going to do. So that was kind of why we went in a different direction okay. with this. Hmm. Okay, well, uh, like I'm saying, though, they don't, uh, we have a bathroom there. Why are they going to put down here $300 for a porta potty? What are they going to charge us for? It looks like it's a padded quote. Uh -huh. Yeah, and again, this, this is just something that uh, it's the only quote that has been solicited by me. And it's just something to give consideration to that if we choose to make those ramp repairs uh, in whatever fashion is going to be best for the town, uh, there, there's going to be some costs involved. And uh, if we were to put some kind of roof structure over the ramp, uh, you would probably want the ramp to be in good shape and not have to go back right. a couple of years later and tear everything up to fix the ramp. I mean, I do think the ramp needs some tuning up. 
on its underpinnings for sure. Yeah. The ones that are obvious to you that jump out at you when mm -hmm. you're at the pop-up Yeah, because we just put that floor down there not that long ago. Yeah, it's the, the brackets that attach yeah. to the concrete paddle. There's several of them that are just gone. And, right and you say Jeff Gales looked at this and doesn't want to... He, he did not look at this component. He was, okay. at, he was having a conversation with Jennifer about putting a, a roof over the ramp. Okay. Uh, when I asked this fellow, Ben John, to go take a look at it, uh, the first thing he noticed was the degradation of a lot of the fasteners and things uh, of that nature. Pretty happy with the work that Jeff did out there on that ramp. Uh, and I'm pretty happy with all, with all the work that he's done for us so far. I mean, I would, I would use this as an opportunity to know this is good to have this quote, but I'd also like to get a quote from Jeff if he would, if we're, if we're talking about we need to replace the ramp. Well, and, and that's, that's a great point, Stan, because where this conversation started had nothing to do with replacing anything on the ramp. Right. It was simply right. covering it. Right. But... You know, with, uh, with a trained eye, and as you said, Brian, uh, to take a look at it, you can see some, oh, yeah. some things that yep. need, quite need right. a little attention. And I don't know if this includes re, you know, uh, a new ramp or just... Uh, doesn't look like it. No, it doesn't look like it. It looks like it's just... Uh, Removal, repair, and reinstallation of railing systems. Yeah, I think the best way to explain that is it would take what's there and make it structurally sound. Right. Okay, but you're going to have to to do that. You got to move the ramp. You're going to do something. To... Well, we can get more quotes on that particular tuning that ramp up underneath. Yeah, I think uh, I think we need to take a closer look, guys. Yeah, we'll be over there Wednesday, right? Right. Pop up pantry. Yeah. Yeah. We can take a close look at that. And can I ask see. a question? Sure. Yeah. Any renovations or anything that's done over there, does that have to go through the state historical commission? For what? To put a, put a ramp? For any any renovation, anything that's, I mean, now that's a repair. If you're repairing what's already existing, that's different. But if you do a cover over the ramp, does that have to go before? According to the, according to the, that is what Jim Hawkins believes. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Because I think that's what it says in the original agreement when that got to be, became a historical landmark. Yeah, and that's what Ken was referring to at the start. Yeah. yeah. So. With nothing else, Mr. Chairman, that is your town board news report. Thank Anybody? you, sir. Can I ask a question? Sure. This is in regards to the drop box. Drop box. Yeah, we were talking about that the other day. Ryan Miner and I were out front this morning and we picked the spot, so oh, okay. yes, we're moving forward. Really? <coughs> yeah, I haven't had a chance to talk to you. Yep. For that was on the upper point, so. wasn't it? Yep. Yeah, yeah, we're moving point. forward on it. Okay. Yeah, we were just talking about that Monday or Tuesday, whatever day. It was. Yeah, when we were out there working on the flag today, yeah. we took all a look right. and Good. got it all okay. figured out. Cool. Anything else? Anybody I'll else? make sure. Do you know where it's going to be? Outside. Probably outside. Outside. Okay, well, we're outside. Probably. I'm going to ask Probably a question. Where's it going to be outside? <laughs> uh, front steps immediately to the right. Last time we brought this in front of the select board, we had not decided to advance uh, that process. Did something change and I missed it? What's that? The drop box. I thought, I, thought, uh, yeah, I thought the board had voted to approve it. Yeah. We did. 2500 for a product. Right. Okay, I must have missed it because <laughs> I'm vehemently opposed to it, yeah. but that's okay. Yeah, we did have another vote on it. Yeah. Well, and, and honestly, when Mona was out sick, Jill and I ended up with all the tax payments, people coming in. And me, no and me, don't forget me. Oh, no, and you, okay. The three of us ended up with a lot because excise taxes were due right. that week, so. A Dropbox would have been a great solution yeah. to that problem. Yeah, it would be nice to see those front steps out there fixed, but if we did that, then we're going to have to... Uh, that would probably make us change it to some other type of... I don't know. Everything's a chain reaction here. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. 
Anybody have anything else? Nope. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.